Good morning, we made it to Saturday. I am not in the driver's seat, cause look, Katie is. We are going to garage sales, and then we're gonna go look at phones because we wanna swap out our phones for new ones. And I will catch up with you later. I'll show you what I got. I don't even think I showed you, no I did. No, I didn't. No, nope, just kidding. I think I have last week's stuff still to show you. I didn't get that much though, but I think I still do. And then I'll show you if we get anything fun this week, but we'll be back and maybe with new phones. Happy Sunday, take two. We are, there's Katie, it's about Katie. <laughs> we are in the car. I, um, last video I said good morning. It's almost five o'clock p.m. So I had to amend that to say good afternoon. We are going out. Um, the husband and Katie have been playing video games all day and I have been reading my books. So my eyeballs look a little red and, um, the word be puffy that's because i've been reading all day we're going to target we're going to get our turkey and then we're going to get i don't know just food stuffs right and who knows what else might target will let us know what we need anyway i will come on later i did um i didn't get anything at garage sales yesterday but i did get a few books at goodwill and then um Oh, and then we got some stuff at TJ Maxx that I can show you. So I'll pop on later and show you some stuff. Hello, I am back. It is Monday. And I'm not at school because it's a fall break. I'm so excited. <laughs> Katie is still here. Super excited about that. So she is working on a puzzle. Monroe is running back and forth in front of the uh, screen door, the sliding doors. So if you hear little, little tiny footsteps, that's who it is, it's Monroe. Anyway, so I played back my video from yesterday to see what I said I was gonna show you, Katie's idea. Well, I don't know, was that your idea or my idea? I'm not really sure, but it was a good one anyway. Anyway. I am going to show you what a couple of the things we got were and also way back to last weekend when I went to garage sales and I did find a couple of things. Let's start there. So I'm sure that we're all surprised when I say that I found books. I know. Um, but I did get some good ones and also I didn't get, I was so stinking good. I did not buy so many books because I already had the books and I'm not buying doubles, sort of. I did buy, I showed you already, there was an Owl Diary book I bought a, way, a while back, and there was one other one, but I know for a fact I'll use them in book studies in upcoming years. I'm just trying to keep an eye on Monroe, because we're waiting for her to poop. Sorry, Monroe, I gave away her secret. Anyway, here's what I got. Um, these came, whoa, these came with CDs, which I don't know that I'll ever use, but maybe I will, who knows? I still have a, um, a DVD CD player that attaches to my work computer, so I could maybe, I'm sorry, I'm looking down at the lizard the whole time, but that's okay. So this uh, book is a really good one, Night Song. Oh my goodness, the glare, there we go. Night Song, and it's about a bat, and it's just so good. Um, it is, I'm trying to remember exactly what it's about. I'll just read the back. It says, Sense is the song you sing out into the world, and the song the world sings back to you. With these words, Chiro's mother sends Chiro, Chiro, it's C-H-I-R-O, not really sure how you say that, out into the night alone for the first time. It's an adventure, but how will he find his way? And how will he find his way back home? It's easy as long as he uses his good sense. Really cool. It incorporates some truth about bats with a fun story. Their echolocation with a little guy trying to find his way back home. So that's a good one. Um, then... I think, I know actually, that this one also came with a CD that I showed you my um, 
Molly Lou Mellon books. I don't know if I had this one or not when I showed you. Yeah, I might have. So this could, in fact, be a duplicate purchase. You know, the thing I just told you I didn't do. But for some reason, until I sat here, I thought this was a different one. But the new part would be the CD. So there. And maybe I'll use it one day or I won't. One of those two things is definitely true. So there we have this purchase. And these were like 50 cents. I mean, come on. And then this one is the last book in a bag with the CD. And I love, love, love these uh, style of stories. There once was a cowpoke who swallowed an ant. So cute. It's kind of the, um, uh, there once was a, an old lady who swallowed a fly. So super cute, super cute, cute, cute. Love these. And the kids love these. Um, and this has an Arizona flair to it. Here he's trying to swallow a road runner to clear up the scene. Now he's swallowing a lizard and it goes on and on. So stinking cute. Now he's swallowing a, a dillo. I mean, an armadillo. Anyway, this book is fun and we're studying Arizona when we get back. Um, are we though? I can't remember. We're either starting Arizona when we get back from fall break, but I think we're still doing the regions a little bit. Oh no, we're doing, okay, I don't know what we're doing. Um, but soon is coming a closer look at Arizona and the Southwest and like our Native American tribes and all that stuff. So I think this one is good. Okay, it took me <laughs> like 20 minutes to talk about three books. This is gonna be, it's only gonna be like a six hour long video, so there's that. Okay, I'll just try to hurry. Not good at hurry. Okay, so then for books, I got this one. I think I only have one cup. Oh, another duplicate copy. I'm a big fat liar. That's just what I am. Um, this one, I think I only have one copy, but I might not have any copies. But they love, um, I feel like I do, because I think they love this one. Um, they uh, have the pictures from the movie. You know what? I think it went missing. Now that I really am thinking about it, because when I went through and organized all my books, I do it every... Um, Monday, I take the books that are in the um, uh, quarantine, the sanitation station, and I put them back in. I don't think I've seen this, so I'm pretty sure this is t right now my only copy. So there's that. Okay. Also, I read this entire set of books when I was little. What? Oh, she pooped. Gotta go. We're back. Poop has been cleaned up and the lizard is feeling really good. So I'm just holding her. We just cleaned her off. She doesn't really get gross, but I don't know. I feel like you should clean them off. Anyway, so I was showing you the Bobsy Twins books. I read every single one of these um, at some point between second and third grade. You come in, don't worry. We don't have a professionally run channel here. We just come in and out the door. We clean up lizard poo. It's all good. So anyway, these books, I don't know why they, I don't know. Anyway, I guess they were remade. I guess. I don't know. But I feel like some of my little girls would love to read these. I love the old fashioned -y pictures in there. Just love these books. Anyway, a couple of my girls love to read the uh, boxcar children, so I thought they might really love these, and they're really nice hardbacks. So I got those two. Oh, 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 she's not wanting to, okay. No, it's playtime. It is playtime. Okay, so here's the deal, Chenille. If you can sit here, you can stay. Don't give me attitude. If you can stay right here, then you can, you can stay. Otherwise, you're out of here. What's it going to be? She doesn't really know yet. Okay. If she starts running, then we'll know. Okay. This one I got. Um, Merry Fairy Holidays. The uh, kids love... Are these the... Okay. These are different ones. These are Flower Fairy friend, Fairies Friends. I don't know. Anyway, I also have a couple of girls who love my Rainbow Fairies collection. Um, this is three Enchanted Christmas Stories. So I thought I would bring that to school. Then, Shark School. I don't have this actual book. I have a couple of the others. I know I have one that has purple on the background, but these are perfect starter chapter books. It says on here, it doesn't actually say, 
but when I ordered some, I ordered them from Scholastic and they were in the third grade um, area, but like they have the bigger print and I feel like a lot of my kids will love these. Whoa, did you see that? That is kind of how it looks. Anyway, got that. And then I have been finding a lot of these lately. I showed you the other really cool pretty one. These are an absolutely perfect, like, look like they came right off the bookstore shelf and I paid like a quarter or 50 cents or something really little like that. And um, this one is super fun. It is Geronimo and the Gold Medal Mystery because look at this. Oh, where are you going there, little one? It has all the um, flags, which is kind of cool. And I thought, you know, that's kind of fun. The kids would love that talks about during ancient times, the beginning of the Olympics. So, these are also fun. And I think that is most of, oh, wait, there's more. I am now officially uh, QVC, but wait, there's more. Oh no, she's in my hair, okay, there. Um, Katie, I don't know how long she's gonna be happy here, but that's okay, we'll get through it, we do. Okay, also, I picked up this book, <clears throat> Moira's Birthday by Robert Munch. You can see it used to be a teacher's book. Um, <clears throat> he's got hilarious books. They're always funny. So picked up that one. I know I've read it before, but I don't know what it's about. Then from the same uh, garage sale, uh, same teacher's garage sale, these are so, so, so cute. The Mr. Putter and Tabby books. They're super cute in um, color pictures and they're just awesome. They're easy chapter books for, I mean, third graders. They're not beginning readers, but they're beginning reading chapter book readers. So those are good. And then this one, Amelia's Fantastic Flight. There we go. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, She's not really. Okay. I'm going to just put her on the floor. Hold, please. Okay. You go run. You have some fun now. Okay. She's on the run. Okay. And the dogs like to sniff her, but she doesn't even care. She's like, fine, dogs. Sniff me. I don't care. Then these two I got. Uh, difficult riddles for smart kids and the don't laugh challenge joke books. I have a couple kids in my class this year every Wednesday our principals get on and do a joke the Wednesday joke of the day and I have a couple kids who wait for it every single Wednesday and it doesn't matter what the joke is they laugh like they've never heard anything so funny in their whole life so I thought they would really like these the don't laugh challenge um, what vegetable helps direct Broadway plays do you know Katie Katie? What vegetable helps direct Broadway plays? Broccoli, carrots, <laughs> asparagus. She's going through it like, like an engineer. We'll, so we'll get there in about 10 minutes. No, I have no idea. Okay, it's a cucumber. Get it? A cucumber. No, that was a bad one. Wasn't a bad one? I don't like that one. What is that? How does Q, like cue cards, like Broadway, like they give them cue. I didn't even know that. <sighs> okay, here's one. Here's one. Why didn't the corn want to grow up? Oh, this is dumb. <laughs> it's not a good one. It was afraid of being stalked. What? Okay, so this <laughs> book is great. You should run out and buy it right away. Anyway, no, it's cute. The kids will love it. Um, Okay, so this is more, Katie, up your alley. This is those, like, those kind of little stories that um, you have to find. Okay, let me, let me try to find one. Mm. Hold, please. This is really fun watching me read a book, I know. Okay, I don't know the answer, but here it goes. Voiceless, it cries. Toothless, it bites. What is it? So it cries and bites, but it doesn't have a voice or teeth. Katie, any ideas? 
I was thinking, like, teeth, it could be a zipper, but that's not it. Voiceless, it cries. Toothless, it bites. What is it? The kids in my class also love to do these. Oh, I know it now because I looked at the answer. Do you have a guess? What? Uh, you can't see it either. But you can feel it. The wind. Voiceless it cries. The wind can crack. She's shaking her head. You know what? You don't even know. It was funny. Anyway, that was a good one. Stop it right now. Okay, then this one got a little mushed because it was sitting in the container. I keep this in my car in the back seat and then I just put my fines in it. And then when it gets, you know, full, I take it out or I just scoop stuff out of it as I want to take it in. This one, you know, I just finished reading a little while ago. I finished reading too. Where's the lizard? Oh, holy cow. Oh, what is she doing? Also, I don't feel like you need to go in the pantry. Um, finished reading. So this is a second copy because if I read it continuous years, it gets kind of old and then they get bored. Okay. All right. This one I specifically picked up with a specific Specific, twice in the same sentence uh, student in mind the unofficial Harry Potter cookbook she loves Harry Potter so do a lot of my kids and so this is really fun it's got like different recipes so I'm gonna let her take it home um, and then bring it back when she's done so yay this one she'll love and then I also found this stuff at another teacher garage sale gold coins and then some little pirate treasure boxes. Don't really know what I'm doing with these. I think there's only like three or two or I don't know. They were cute. And it was like buy three things for a dollar, so I did. And then these I'm gonna put in, I showed you a several videos back, the treasure box I bought. Oh my gosh, the kids absolutely love that. And what I did is I put in clues to the next Thing we were studying in our benchmark series so I figured these mixed in there with the pictures would be kind of fun so that's what I bought those for and that is it except for I forgot I bought these for a quarter these little clips I love um, I love clips to bind papers okay then I bought all of the I'm just gonna hold up the container this is a little bit silly I bought this whole container of Sharpie highlighters. I have that pack. I got some packs like that. And I got it all for three bucks, I think. We use these all the time when we're like um, highlighting text evidence. So I'm never uh, gonna ever not use those. So I bought those. And then, I'm trying to organize my life here. Not working out. Okay. Um, yeah, it is. It's working out fine. I don't know why I'm yelling. Okay. So, putting all the books back. Oh, one more thing I got at garage sales. A bag of pencils. And these are not the good pencils. Which stinks is that all the plastic, when you sharpen these, they flake off. I call it pencil confetti because it, like, leaves, like, little twilly twirly thing. I don't know how to, what I'm talking about. But anyway, these will be fun for prizes or something. It was two bucks for probably 40 pencils. I don't know. So it was a good deal. So I bought those. <clears throat> and then these are the books that I'll just get those later. These are the books that I got from Goodwill on Saturday. Number one, this one I've almost bought several times at um, Barnes & Noble, but oh, but I've al always had other things in my hands. So I've put this one back several times, The Alice Network. Um, if you've read it, comment below, let me know. It was written by Kate Quinn, and it was written in, hold please, 2017, so it's fairly new. It says, 1947, in the chaotic aftermath of World War II, American college girl Charlie St. Clair is pregnant, unmarried, and on the verge of being thrown out of her very proper family. She's also turning a desperate hope. Let me try that again. She's also nursing a desperate hope. 
that her beloved cousin Rose, who disappeared in Nazi-occupied France during the war, might still be alive. So when Charlie's parents banish her to Europe to have her little problem taken care of, Charlie breaks free and heads to London, determined to find out what happens to the cousin she loves like a sister. 1915. A year into the Great War, Eve Gardner burns to join the fight against Germans. I'm sorry, I'm trying really hard with my glasses on. Might have to, I'm just going to take them off. Uh, fight against the Germans and unexpectedly gets her chance when she's re recruited to work as a spy. Sent into enemy-occupied France, she's trained by the mesmerizing Lily, codenamed Alice, the Queen of Spies, who manages a vast network of secret agents right under the enemy's nose. Thirty years later, haunted by the betrayal that ultimately tore apart the Alice network, Eve spends her days drunk and secluded in her crumbling London house. So it's a very uplifting story. Okay. Uh, that is until a young American barges in, uttering a name Eve hasn't heard in decades, and launches them both on a mission to find the truth, no matter where it leads. So, sounds pretty good. That was one <clears throat> I got this weekend at uh, Barnes & Noble. Or, no. Mm -mm. Nope. Goodwill. Then, I also got this one. Haven't seen the movie yet. Did it come out? Yeah, I feel like it's been out a while, but we haven't been going to movies. My husband and I bought a um, AMC subscription. I don't know if that's even what you call it, but it's where you pay $20 a piece a month. And so we were paying $40 a month, but you can see up to three movies a week, which we didn't. But we would go like once, twice, maybe even three times a month, and that more than paid for the $40 that you pay a month, because AMC's tickets are like 10 20 bucks, I don't know, depending on when you go. So we really liked that, but then when the pandemic and everything, we, we they put us on hold, which was really nice of them. I would have canceled otherwise. But so we haven't seen a movie out since like February or March. So I feel like this one's already probably been in the theaters and gone, so we probably could watch it on Netflix or um, HBO or one of those. Anyway, haven't read the book, haven't seen the movie, but it looks kind of interesting. So I got this one, Where'd You Go, Bernadette? I'm not going to read the back because I feel like most people know about this one. This one looks kind of hilarious. Um, the Potty Mouth at the Table, it's by Lori Notaro, and it's just, she's a comedian. <clears throat> Let's see. Pinterest foodies, Anne Frank's underwear, New York Times bestseller author Lori Notaro, rightly hailed as the funniest writer in the solar system, spares nothing and no one, least of all herself, in this uproarious new collection of essays on rudeness. So it just sounded like something kind of funny. And then this one I've also seen. This is the last one I got at Goodwill. I got four books. This one I've seen at Target, I think and had it in my hands. It looks pretty good. It was written, it's called The Couple Next Door, and it's written by Sherry La Pena, or La Pena. Doesn't have an enye over the end, so it might be La Pena. Oh, this is an older one, 2000, oh no, 2016. I thought it said 2006 for a minute. Okay, I'll read the back. Anne and Marco Conti seem to have it all, a loving relationship, a wonderful home, and their beautiful baby, Cora. But one night when they are at a dinner party next door, a terrible crime is committed. Suspicion immediately falls on the parents, but the truth is much more complicated. What follows is the nerve-wracking unraveling of a family. Yep. Detective Rosbach knows that the panicked couple is hiding something inside the curtained house. Anne and Marco both soon discover that the other is keeping secrets, secrets they've kept for years. The shocking truth will leave you breathless. So that one sounds pretty good. So those are the four I bought at Goodwill. Now, I said something about, why did I put those in there? Ah! Ah! Okay. <laughs> nothing, <laughs> nothing, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> the um, crate didn't just fall, I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> uh oh, where's the lizard? <laughs> Lizard's fine. Oh my gosh, what if that would have fallen on her, Katie? <sighs> this book I purchased at Barnes & Noble. And it's called The Unmapped Chronicles, The, the Bickery Twins and the Phoenix Tears. So I did a book study on the first one in this series. There's a lizard. I can hear her. Oh, there she is. She's right down by my feet. 
And the first one in the series, yeah, is this one. I'm gonna go really close. It's Casper Talk and the Ever Dark Wings or something like that. Hopefully, hopefully you can read that. I don't know if it's focusing or not. Let me try. It is, oh my gosh, it's so tiny. Casper Talk in the Ever Dark Wings. I was right. So this is the sequel. There's the author, Elf, uh, Abby Elfenstone. Yeah. And so I bought this one because I really loved the first one. It was really good. And this is the <laughs> second one in the series. I don't know why I'm laughing. Anyway. So can't wait to read that one, but apparently I'll have to because I have about 647 other books that I've also purchased. Okay, this next thing is really cool. I'm showing you the back of the envelope because the front of the envelope has my address on it, but it comes to me from, I don't know. It comes to me, I ordered these from the state of Arizona. So if you're an Arizona teacher, go on the ADE website. Could have been where I got them. I feel like I got a an email. And I ripped off the part that tells where it's from. So that was really awesome. But, it, oh, hey, maybe this will, okay, this might tell us something. Um, Anyway, this came from, oh, the Arizona Commission for the Deaf and Hard of Hearing. So if you type in that, possibly, if you, I don't know if other states are doing it, but Arizona is, and I ordered them for free. I ordered them a very long time ago, but they just now came. I ordered them back when we were um, online teaching. They have a nose thingy, and they have this. So you can, um, if you have kids who are hard of hearing, also how bad does it fog up? I can't really tell. It seems kind of bad, but uh, I can stick on my tongue. Anyway, <sighs> ooh, I don't like this. It smells terrible, but that's okay. Um, anyway, you can, oh, I think, oh, there we go. Okay, I didn't have it all the way done. There we go. Okay, so it has the little adjustments on the ears and if you have hard of hearing students that read lips, this is really helpful. Also, a lot of times, every time I breathe in, it gets sucked to my face. I hate that. That's part of the trouble of masks. I'll just hold it out like I'm not supposed to do, but I'm not in a crowded classroom right now. So the nice thing, and when I feel like I could use this, is when we are teaching phonics instruction, our foundations. Oh my gosh, I have to, sometimes I do actually have a microphone and I stick it up under my mask because if I'm having them write the, the letters that say a certain sound, they can't understand what I'm saying. Right, Monroe? She knows. So this would come in handy for that. Anyway, they sent me a 10 pack and so I thought I would take, I'll keep that one out now because I've worn it, but I thought I would keep like three for myself and then I'll take the rest to school and share it with my teacher friends. So that was something cool. Then, our family loves to play games. At least we used to. Well, I still do. We still love to play games, but we're all in different areas now, so we don't get to very often. There was a game that I kept telling Katie, I really want this game, but it's 50 bucks and you know, we're not going to be together to play it that often. Do I really want to spend 50 bucks? Yeah, I probably do. Probably will. It was for 55 at Barnes & Noble, but we went to TJ Maxx, and it was there. This is it. Ticket to Ride. If you've played this game, please comment below. Tell me about it. All I know is what I've read on the back. It looks so much fun, and also I've heard a bunch of people... Um, where have I heard people talking about it? Um, I talked to a few people at garage sales. We were talking about games. And they, a few people, have told me they really like this game. Basically, it's a cross-country train trip. And you try, it's kind of a little bit, it seems a little bit like Monopoly. But um, they, uh, you, you try to gather routes and make them longer. And then you try to fulfill your destination ticket by connecting two distant cities and you try to build the longest railway. I'm gonna go in really close and just stop. So anyway, here's the best part. Look what I paid for this at TJ Maxx. I paid $25, so half price. And it's the same exact game. And Barnes & Noble's right next door. 
So, wow. So, super excited about this. I only bought one. I should have bought one for a gift, but I don't know who I would have given it to. Anyway, I can't wait to play that. And is that the last thing? No. No, it is not. Bring your puzzle over. Katie is working on a puzzle that we also got at Barnes & Noble. Don't throw it. You see what happens when I try to be in charge of big things. So, is this the right way up? Yeah. <clears throat> Katie got this puzzle. It's only a thousand pieces. She has it knocked out, what, about a third of the way already? Um, and she's only worked on it for a few hours. But anyway, she's a puzzle lover. There was this one also. But we, we picked this one. You picked this one. I really had nothing to do with it. So anyway, the, oh, internal temperature too high. Okay. I know. It's weird. Okay, so the camera overheated again. I feel like that's a sign that I've talked too long. And I really have. So I'm going to close this video out now. It's going to start with the last, I don't know. Was I at school after you came? I don't know. I'm going to close out this video here and I will put whatever videos I haven't already put up. Um, have a wonderful rest of your Thanksgiving week. I'll probably put more videos up before I go back to school, but if not, have a wonderful uh, Black Friday if you go out shopping, Cyber Monday if you shop online like I do, and um, just enjoy time. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully that you get to spend with your family and your friends. And I truly, I mean, I've always been a person who really appreciates and is full of gratitude for everything. But man, this year has really made, I feel like I, it's made me even more appreciative of the fact that Katie got to come home, the fact that my son is going to be here, and I'm just super, super happy for everything in this life that we still have and we can still uh, celebrate. So, keep positive about the world we live in, and... I feel like I'm going to sneeze. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to help me grow my channel, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.